Hey friends, if you're looking for quick tips to help you jumpstart your week, you are in the right place. I'm Lori Palau, host of the popular weekly podcast, Organized Life, founder of Simply Be Organized. And every Monday, I am here to bring you a quick organizing tip in under 15 minutes. All you have to do is click the subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening, and let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's tip of the week. I am your host, Lori Palau, and um. True confession, I am recording this episode on January 4th, and I have yet to de-Christmas my house. And I've spent the past couple of days on site with clients de-Christmasing their house. And anybody that can tell you for all my fellow professional organizers, once you spend hours, even days working on somebody else's house, the last thing you want to do is come home and organize or declutter your own house. And so I'm in this like state of arrested development where I keep walking around my house going, oh my gosh, I need to hire a professional organizer to come and de-Christmas my house because I don't have the energy or the bandwidth to to do it, but it's stressing me out. And so um, I feel you people, anybody that's out there that is just like overwhelmed with all of the influx of things that we accumulated over the holidays, whether that's food, whether that's stuff, whatever it is. Um, you know, I always kind of take that week between Christmas and New Year's to just take my foot off the gas. And so naturally stuff, you know, kind of piles up and now I'm dealing with the aftermath of that and it's stressing me out. So if you're with me, like, just know I'm in this, I'm in this journey with you people which brings me to kind of what the topic is for today. And it is five things that you can do to make your home less stressful. And I was trying to think of, you know, things that we can do that haven't been done before. And we're going to talk about some really specific actionable things, but then some of it is just that simple stuff that we talk about all the time. That is just kind of like, like he says, just do it. Like you just have to do it. Sometimes you just got to suck it up and do it. Um, but I know that there are very tangible, specific parameters that we can put around. What can we do if I want my home to feel and look and be less stressful? And that can be, again, I just don't want to have my shoulders hunched up. I don't want to be yelling. I don't want to feel anxious because I always say clutter is more about how it makes you feel or an organized home is defined by how it makes you feel. If you are not stressed and your clutter is bringing you comfort, Godspeed, my friends. It's when it causes pain points for you is when we want to look to make behavioral changes so that we can live the life that we want to live without the stuff being in our way, being a roadblock. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So the first thing that I want to talk about. So again, five specific things that you can do to help your home be less stressful. One of the really big things, and I was thinking about this yesterday as I was online at Home Goods, is avoiding impulse buys. Now, impulse buys are everywhere we look. We don't have to even leave our home. It comes to us through Instagram. It comes to us through, you know, Google ads. It's everywhere, people. Um, it's at the grocery store. It's like I said, online at Home Goods. Whatever it is, there's impulse buys around us constantly. And one of the things that I've realized just through kind of my own self discovery is every time I shouldn't say every time, but the majority of times that I buy something based on impulse, I regret it as soon as I get in the door. So whether that's that dessert that looked really good in the grocery store. And I was like, oh, let me just get it. Or it is something that I bought that I thought is going to like make me feel better or make me look better or whatever it is. Because then once it arrives in my home, I now have to, well, I've paid for it, but now I have to find a place for it to live. Or I oftentimes didn't give it a lot of thought beforehand. So I might thought this is going to look good on and then I get it home and it doesn't. And so either I'm returning it, which is taking up more time or I'm just like wasting time, money, and space. 
So one of the things is, again, you want to try to have your home and your life be a little bit more stress-free, um, avoid those impulse buys. Nine times out of 10, what you want will be available at another time. There's the rarest of occasions where this is like a once in a lifetime chance and you have to do it now, but more often than not, you can go back and get it. So just be intentional, be deliberate, avoid impulse buys. Okay. The next one is more about asking for help. I know for myself, again, I I have been really bad at doing this over the years and I've gotten so much better is asking for help, giving people jobs in my house. Now, obviously, if you live alone, maybe you have to pay to outsource, right? Because you have like a partner, a kid, a roommate to do this. But so many people martyr their way through things or just this is the way it's always been. So I just do it or I know I can do it better or faster or quicker or more efficiently. So I'm just going to do it. And that leads to burnout. We've done episodes on that. There are studies that show it. Give people jobs. I did it the other day. Logan is home for her winter break and she's been helping out around the house. She's been whether it's doing laundry, unloading the dishwasher. Um, the other day she said to me, hey, mom, I just Swiffered because the dog hair was like out of control. So just want to let you know I did that. I didn't even ask her to do it. She just saw a problem and decided to solve it. And again, that is because I've empowered the people in my life to see a problem and solve it. And so that doesn't just happen. You have to prompt that. So all of you people at home, even if your kids are small, ask them, give them a job. It could be something really, really small and incremental, but you are laying the groundwork. And so many of us are feeling stressed and overwhelmed because we have so much on our plates. So anything that you can delegate, outsource, share the burden, even asking again, could be asking a friend to help out with something. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. That will really, really help you in the long run. Which leads me to the next one, which leads right into it, which is about building in margin in our lives. Again, what do I mean by that? Oftentimes we schedule our lives to the minute. We build in no buffer. We have something planned from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. And what happens, think about when you go to a doctor's office and they're booked or maybe even double booked and you're sitting in the waiting room and then an emergency happens or somebody's appointment goes a little bit longer. It sets everything else for the rest of the day moving forward back because we've booked everything in to the, to the exact minute. And when you do that in your schedule, it gives you no breathing room for a computer that's not working or the car that's not starting or the unexpected phone call or whatever's going to happen because things will happen. And so whether it's, I'm going to schedule, I'm going to, you know, give myself 15 minutes before, you know, activity to activity or phone calls or whatever that looks like in your world, giving yourself a little bit of buffer time pays off. And again, if you are a parent leading by example, by doing this is so, so, so important for teaching healthy habits for your kids. Okay. Next one is, again, this is, goes back to the kind of like simple ground rules, no fuss, no muss, put stuff back where it belongs. I know it seems really like obvious, but one of the biggest things, and this is similar to kind of the the first one where I said avoiding impulse buys in that moment, it's so much easier to just like use your home as a drop spot and just, Hey, I came in, drop my keys, came in, drop my jacket, just drop my, my backpack, whatever it is. If you, I use something, I left it out. It is so much easier in the immediate to just do that, to just leave wherever it is, whatever it looks like as a drop spot. But where that becomes stressful is when you 
go to look for it. You might not remember where you dropped it or left it, or your house just looks cluttered and disorganized because things aren't in their proper home. So again, I su subscribe to that two minute rule. If I can do it in under two minutes, I'm going to put it away. If it's something that I'm like, oh, I have to go out to the garage or the attic or something. Okay. Maybe I'll like let stuff, you know, I'll, I'll define a specific time to do that. But most of the things, it's like death by a thousand cuts. It's all of these little things, not putting the dish away, not hanging up your coat or your keys or whatever it looks like. So not flipping the laundry, not putting your stuff away. So those are those little nagging things like a hangnail that just get under our skin and cause us this unnecessary stress. So just do it. Just put it away. Just suck it up and put it away. Sorry, I got no, no other nice way to say it. Just find the time to do it. And then the last one is again, just, and I kind of, uh, to be totally fair, I just made this one up. You could set whatever parameter you want, but I said, edit anything in your house that you haven't touched, used, or worn in a year. Now, again, I'm not talking about keepsakes, people. That's obviously something different. But I'm saying if you've got clothes that you haven't worn in a year, shoes that you haven't worn in a year, some sort of kitchen gadget that you bought that you thought was going to be the latest and greatest and you haven't used it, um, get rid of it. All those things, just get rid of it. Give yourself some specific parameters of like kind of rules to live by. Because once you set those rules, it's a lot easier to follow them. If you are saying, okay, I know that the rule is I haven't worn it in a year, I get rid of it. Then you're taking that whole decision fatigue out of it because the decision's already made. I know that if I'm not wearing it or if my kid's not playing with it, it's leaving. And again, when it comes to toys, maybe that means you're putting it away and saving it for the next kid to come up, you know, to, to grow or clothes to grow into it. But, but you want to take stuff out of rotation that you haven't touched in a year. So again, you can make that six months. You could set whatever guideline you want. I think a year is a safe bet because it's gone through a full seasonal cycle of things. Um, and that's it. And if you kind of use that rule of thumb, you can go through much more quickly than going, than deciding and going through each and every item, weighing the pros and cons of keeping it, getting rid of it. You know, the first question you're going to ask is, have I used it, worn it, touched it in a year? And if the answer is no, out it goes. That's it. So those are my five tips. And again, I feel you. The struggle is real. I know there's all of this, you know, push for everyone to get organized in January. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes you're just trying to like come back for air. Maybe you're, you know, there's a lot going on in your life. And so don't feel added pressure. Just start small. Pick something that's causing you stress, anxiety, and just go with it. And we're here to walk with you every step of the way. So if this is your first time tuning into our show, welcome. Make sure that you um, not only follow our show or watch us, sub subscribe on YouTube, but get on our email list because we send out um, weekly emails with our tips, with articles that we think are, um, or conversations that we've had on our show, any specials or things that we're running, things that can help you actually simplify your life. So in the show notes, you can go and click on, I think it's just the opt-in form to get on our email list. You can unsubscribe at any time if the stuff that we're bringing you isn't valuable, but we want you to be in the know and we want to be able to help you on your decluttering, organizing journey, wherever you are in that, whatever season of life that you're in. And um, also we have an upcoming webinar, one other talking point that is going to be coming up in February, I think it's February 2nd, all about applying the Enneagram and clutter in your life. So if you are a service-based professional, whether it's a professional organizer or a therapist or an educator, somebody that deals with people and specifically, um, you know, having them make decisions and 
you want to apply how personality types can play into that, you're going to want to check out our webinar. It's $20. We'll be doing a replay like we did the last time. We had a great um, turnout for our last event. This one, again, it's all over Zoom, so you can watch it in the comfort of your home at your convenience. We'll drop the link again in the show notes, but sign up for it. It is uh, February 2nd, all about applying the Enneagram. We're going to give an overview of what the Enneagram is if you're a newbie, but then really talk about how each of the nine core types relates to clutter in a different way. And um, I think it can be helpful, again, not just for professional organizers, but also for parents to use when communicating with their spouse, with their partner, with their children. And um, hope to see you there. So until next week, I'm Lori Cloud. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.